Hi, I'm Jack Cush, executive editor of RoomNow.com, and welcome to Therapeutic Updates. Therapeutic Updates is a new uh, news feature on RoomNow. Um, we're launching it this week after the FDA hearings, and we're going to have two of these, one on the uh, August 2nd meeting on Sarukamev and another on August 3rd uh, regarding tofacitinib. Uh, Therapeutic Updates is basically a periodic um, news report that'll be either text or video and will involve the experts involved in new advances in therapeutics, either new drug indications or new drug approvals, um, the proceedings of important meetings about a drug, uh, label updates, new clinical trials, important clinical trials, uh, new guidelines, etc. things that are important um, to the management of patients with rheumatic disease. In this report, um, and, in, and the one that's attached to this, there's going to be, the experts are going to answer five questions, uh, specifically about the, um, the hearing. So I'll take on the first five questions. In the next video, Dr. Alan Gabowski will do the same. So uh, today we're gonna to talk about the August 2nd, 2017 Arthritis Advisory Committee hearing, wherein the FDA's uh, panel reviewed the application by Janssen for the approval of serucumab in patients with, patients with moderate to severely active rheumatoid arthritis not responsive to a DMARD. Uh, and here are the five questions. The first question is, what's the overall impression? Well, uh, as you know, the outcome of the, uh, of the meeting was that the drug was not recommended for approval. Um, and it was sort of the good times and the bad times. There was uh, a half of the meeting that was really very encouraging and really looked great. The clinical data, the ACR 205070, the multiple clinical trials over you know 3,000 patients uh, in drug development, the X-ray data all looked great, and and unanimously the 13 member panel approved uh, recommended approval of, of the drug based on its efficacy and also on the basis of the radiographic um, results. Um, the second half of the meeting, unfortunately, in discussion was dominated by the imbalance in safety signals, specifically the imbalance with regard to the number of deaths. There was 35 deaths, uh, one in placebo and 34 that were on the drug. Uh, and that was the problem. And, and it was the safety that, that drug down the, the panel to the point where they largely, um, 12 to 1, voted against approval of serucumab for uh, rheumatoid arthritis, and it was really over the concern on safety. Uh, and the problem here is that everybody in the panel admitted that this could be random chance, this could be bias. There was a problem in the way the trial was designed, specifically measures designed to protect patients, early escape, early on in the trial, ended up becoming a problem later on in the results. It turns out that the patients who escaped at week 18 or week, at week 40 were the ones who had the worst disease and had the worst outcomes, safety outcomes, including more deaths, then it certainly colored the picture significantly. And the question is how to handle those patients and should we even be doing early escape and or should there even be a placebo uh, in these trials? Nonetheless, the data was uh, hard to, to, to handle. Um, it was uh, hard to ignore. And uh, in spite of the, the, the clear efficacy of the, of the compound, um, uh, I think the, the panel thought it was the smarter and better thing to do to vote down the results. I, I agree with those results and that outcome uh, as unfortunate as it may have been. Second question, is this a loss? Do we need another IL-6 inhibitor? And as you know, we have Actemra on the market now for many years and, um, and, and has new indications and a lot of excitement about that. A new IL-6 inhibitor, uh, cerilumab or Kevzara, has been approved in the United States and Canada and uh, in, in the EU, and also is now another option for IL-6 inhibition. Uh, and this would have been the third. Sarukumab was uh, the third and maybe distinct in that it binds IL-6 directly and not the receptor. Uh, and was that an advantage? Do we need another a, a third uh, IL-6 inhibitor? Or is this really no great loss? Um, my, my view is that um, the more the merrier one competition makes for better therapeutics, it makes for better education, um, wider, more appropriate use of, of the drug. Um, I think that uh, it, it, like, as we saw with TNF inhibitors, the addition of not just one, but two, three, four, and five 
grew the market, had more people being treated, and I think it ultimately shows up in the important outcomes such as death and surgery and work disability. Um, so, uh, and, and I think that, again, the competition is important, and it also, we learn more about these drugs and specifically about the role of IL-6 in the management of patients with inflammatory disorders. So I do think it was a loss. I think that um, um, there are other IL-6 drugs in development that will um, be shaken by these uh, these hearings and these uh, these results uh, and may have to regroup and, and redo some of their, their drug development. Third question, are placebo control trials dead? Do we even need placebo control trials? And my answer is, we first off, the FDA still requires one placebo control trial for drug approval. But that's it. You can do that with a few hundred patients and you're done. Um, I don't know why we're doing placebo controlled trials, especially given that we have so many therapeutic options for RA patients. In fact, in fact, I think to do more than one is criminal and should not be allowed. There are many designs that you could also do that would allow for minimization of placebo exposure. One would be this early escape method, but you can see in this trial, it led to some problems with the ultimate results. Another way would be to do the trial design that was used in JIA, where everybody gets open label drug from the outset and those who are responders then are blindly randomized either placebo or the active compound looking for flare rates in the placebo group as your endpoint. That minimizes exposure and the, and, and as far as duration and also the number of people who are exposed. Uh, yes, we need more active comparator trials and non-inferiority has got to be the new standard for new drug development. Fourth, can we even talk about safety issues in a trials that are designed to prove efficacy. And I think that that was uh, an issue here. Most of these trials were a few hundred in each trial. Uh, they had a few thousand in drug development, but you know, that's really good at identifying nausea, um, stomach ache and um, uh, shortness of breath and common um, pedestrian sort of symptomatology that uh, the regular pop public gets as well. We're really concerned about events that occur in less than one to two percent of individuals. So that's going to happen normally in one to two percent of individuals. What about RA patients? And now what about RA patients on a new compound? These trials are not very good at doing this. And that's what REMS programs are supposed to be involved with to identify uh, the ongoing um, safety as more patients are exposed to the drug in the open market. Um, this is what registries are particularly good at. I think that um, in this study, we were um, lucky, maybe, to identify uh, a, a, an all-cause mortality statistic that seemed to be um, heavily weighted in, in, against the drug um, that was trying to be approved. So uh, again, we have to worry about safety considerations, and I think this one was uh, lucky that it was so clear that we had to take it seriously and not approve the drug. And lastly, what about the panels? Are, are the panels uh, well-constructed and truly representative uh, I, as a panel member myself in the past, I can tell you that um, these panels are, are hard to come by. Everyone's busy. Everyone has conflicts. Um, experts are, 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 are not always available. Um, and uh, we need representation by a lot of different uh, sides of the drug process, the clinical drug, uh, trial process, the, the practice groups. Um, and I think the FDA does a very good job of this. There was a uh, a lot of day-to-day um, -day practitioners on the panel. There were academic people on the panel. There were statisticians. There were patients. There were um, scientific representatives and an industry representative. Um, so I, I like the makeup of the panels. I, I think that um, they become a very hard um, um, bar to to surpass when it comes to approval. If you know, it's it, I think it's easy for the experts to get together and pat themselves on the back and say how great their trial designs are and their thinking is, but to take it to the streets and, and get approval from everyone in sort of a 360 manner is what these panels do well. So I congratulate the FDA on putting this panel together uh, and how they've done this um, over the years. Uh, that's it for Therapeutic Update. Look at the next video, see what Dr. Gabowski has to say.